Brielle, is Isaac gone already? Hi, Jesse. Yeah, he left an hour ago. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. How could they do this to you? Sending my son away on a business trip when you're about to pop any day now. His boss must be heartless. Doesn't he care about your condition? This is outrageous. Tell me about it. It was a last minute thing. And by the way they put it, he had no choice. But hey, he'll be back before the baby comes. That's something, right? Gotta look on the bright side. <laughs> if only we had known sooner, we could have planned for a home birth. Yeah, I know. And I'm really sorry for putting you through this. Having to take care of me while Rick's away? I mean, you already live with us, but I know you value your privacy. And now you have to deal with a pregnant woman and more chores. I feel terrible. Don't you worry about that, sweetheart. It's no trouble at all. I'm grateful to you for letting me stay here. A little housework is the least I can do to repay you. I'll still do what I can. I won't dump everything on you. And this might sound strange, but please don't be too nice to me. Really? Is that how you feel? Well, then I won't hold back anymore. There's something I've been wanting to say for a while, but I kept quiet because I didn't want to upset my son. But I can't keep it in any longer. You need to get off that couch and get some exercise. Oh, do I? I'm sorry. Yes, you do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not judging you. I know what you're going through, but you have to be strong and healthy to deliver a baby. Right? How can you be strong and healthy if you're sitting around all day? You need to get moving and fast. Everyone's into fitness these days, and pregnant women are no exception. They're keeping their figures in shape. But you, Brielle, you've become a whale. I suppose I have gained a lot of weight. I'll try to watch it from now on. You bet you will. Because I'm going to whip you into shape while Rick's gone. He won't believe his eyes when he sees you. I didn't keep this amazing body of mine into my 60s by accident. And I think you could use some of my expertise and wisdom to turn your life around. Please, be gentle with me. You know, now that you mention it, I have been feeling more sluggish lately, and I get tired from the slightest thing. I don't think I can even touch my toes anymore. Enough said. The bottom line is that you need to lose some of that extra weight, and I mean everything that's not the baby. I have the perfect exercise for you. It's a great way to start our new training program. You're going to clean the hallway floor. Okay, should I use a regular cloth? That's the spirit. I like it. That's how we did it back in the day. You see, we didn't have any of these fancy gadgets that people depend on now. There's nothing like housework to burn some calories. It's a wonderful workout. If you do it right, you'll be sweating buckets. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I'm ready. Let's start with the hallway floor scrubbing. Just don't push yourself too hard, honey, okay? You don't want to slip and fall. That would be counterproductive to getting in shape, so be careful. My son would kill me if anything happened to you. Okay, got it. Slow and steady floor scrubbing. That's the plan. I'm on it. You know, everyone has poor posture from sitting too much and staring at screens all day. And they say that scrubbing is great for fixing your pelvis. There's no housework like it for preparing for labor. All right, sweetie, I'm off to the store to get some groceries now so you get cracking. Okay? Have fun. Thanks. I'm going to make this floor so shiny, you'll be able to see your reflection on it. Drive carefully. You're not coming back until late tonight, right? I was thinking of going to the store to get some stuff. Do you need anything? Oh, you were. How about you go to Peep's Bargains in the next town instead? The next town? Sorry, I didn't plan on driving. I thought a nice brisk walk would be good for the exercise routine that I've been following. I was going to go to the local supermarket. The local supermarket? What a joke. Just walk the extra miles. Walking to the next town will make your neighborhood walk look like a joke. Um, sure, but the next town is pretty far and it'll take forever to get there. In my current state, it'll take me at least three hours by the time I go, shop, and come back. It'll probably be bedtime already. Exercise, exercise, exercise. That's what you need. You may not be able to run a marathon anytime soon, but a nice brisk walk won't hurt you, even if you're pregnant. Sure, I can walk, and I can even walk fast, but I have to draw the line at six hours. That's almost a trek. Listen to you, you drama queen. The kids these days. I tell you, back in my day, we had to walk eight hours to the nearest butcher every week. And you know what? 
We did it without whining. Move it, you big fat manatee. Um, what did you just call me? Don't take it personally, dear. That's what we used to call obese pregnant women back in the good old days. I'm only trying to help you. I'm not blaming you, dear. You're a victim of the times. It's not your fault. You grew up in an era of no morals and no discipline. But you should know that raising kids takes a lot of work, and you'll find it much harder without the stamina. It would be smart to get as fit and healthy as you can before the baby comes, rather than waiting until you're busy with childcare and you don't have the time. Stamina! Stamina! Okay, I guess you're right. Okay, fine. Peeps bargains it is. That's my girl. <laughs> the fruits and veggies at Peeps Bargains are so cheap you'll be shocked. So make sure you take a big backpack with you. I want you to get some onions, three cucumbers, some tomatoes, a pepper, some carrots, some bananas, and a big pumpkin. Oh, and we need more potatoes too. So grab a bag of those while you're there. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Think of it as weight training for giving strong hugs. When the baby grows up, you have to be careful in case she's a girl too. She'd be in trouble if she ended up being a big fatty like her mother. All the women in our family are thin and small. I'd feel so bad for her if she looked like you. Um, Jessie, my BMI was normal before I got pregnant. Maybe so, but now you're the size of a continent, which means less talking and more moving manatee. You don't see pregnant women who look like you anymore. Aren't you worried about how much you stick out? You should know better than anyone after seeing all the other moms to be at the doctors. I'm due in a month. What did you expect? A supermodel? Of course I'm going to be huge. I have a nearly full-grown baby in my belly. You know, I really don't think it's that bad. No excuses. Less moaning and more moving. Chop chop. I can't believe my own son is married to such a fat blob. I'm sure you're a disgrace to him. He's just too kind to say anything. I'll give you a piece of advice. You'll regret it if you take him for granted. Don't think that just because you're pregnant, you can be a pig. You're a woman before you're a wife and a mother, and you better remember that. Okay, okay. Please don't misunderstand me, Brielle. I'm not saying any of these things to be cruel or hurt you. On the contrary, I'm telling you this because I love you. But when it comes to exercise, it's important to have a purpose rather than just wandering around aimlessly. It's useful to have a motive. In this case, shopping. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me repeat, honey. I'm only doing this because I love you. It might seem like I'm being harsh on you now, but one day you'll look back on this time and think, "I have the best mother-in-law in the world. I want you to give birth to the strongest baby boy ever." Anyway, enough chit chat. You've got a long walk ahead of you, so the faster you get going, the better. Make sure you get back home in time to make us a nice, healthy, balanced dinner with those fresh vegetables. All right, I'm going. Wish me luck. Oh, that reminds me. No eating or drinking on the way. You're so chubby. Fasting for a while would do you some good. Who needs food when you're carrying all that fat? Make sure you get receipts for everything. I want to make sure you went. No cheating. Brielle, are you there? Why aren't you picking up the phone? Is everything okay? What do you want? Is that how you talk to your mother-in-law? Show some respect, girl. Who do you think you are? Ignoring my messages? That's rude, plain and simple. Back in my day, we got a spanking for that kind of thing. This is not a good time. How can you be so busy? You can't answer your own mother-in-law. You're a pregnant housewife. All you do is lounge around the house all day. So much you'd make a sloth ashamed. Are you saying there's something more important than answering me? Your mother-in-law, the boss of this house and the leader of this family? Wow. Listen to yourself. This is how you've been treating her all this time? Huh? Her? What are you talking about? Speak clearly, girl. Hey, Miss Porky, it's dinner time. You know, hurry up and get your fat ass home. Oink, oink. How long does it take to walk to the damn supermarket? Who's Miss Porky? It's the adorable nickname I made up for you. Oh, sorry. Did you like big blubbery manatee better? You're a monster. My daughter will never come home again. Excuse me, your daughter? What are you talking about? Did you bump your head? Do you mean the baby? Wrong. I mean, Brielle. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Jesse? What a pity we're talking again under these circumstances. It's me, Vanessa, Brielle's mother. Huh? Wait, what? Vanessa, this is Brielle's number. It says her name on my screen. You're not fooling anyone. I'd appreciate it if you didn't play silly games with me. Brielle, don't you think you're too old for this? Hurry up and come home so you can cook my dinner. I'm starving.
Brielle was rushed to the hospital after collapsing on the side of the road. She's sleeping in a hospital bed right now. Brielle collapsed? Wait a minute, is this really Brielle's mother? Yes, I can call you if you don't trust me. No, that's not necessary. So she collapsed? I wonder why. Exactly what I just told you. I think you know better than anyone else why she did, don't you? She showed me your chat logs. You made my pregnant daughter walk three hours to the supermarket in scorching heat to buy your groceries? Uh, well, I didn't make her. Vanessa, I want you to know that she agreed to go on that walk. I didn't force her to do anything. All I did was give her some tips because she said she wanted to lose some weight. Do you really think I'd make her do anything she didn't want to? What do you take me for? I take you for the exact kind of person you are in the message history I read. How many times did she tell you she didn't think that it was a good idea? Because she was due in a month just a few days ago. She told you she didn't want to go to the supermarket because she wasn't feeling well. And you shamed her and bullied her into going. How are you ever going to be the mother your baby needs if you can't even walk to the store? That was your reply, wasn't it? The hell are you doing? Vanessa, please just calm down and think about this for a second. You and I are from the same generation. So surely you, of all people, understand. Back in the good old days, women kept doing the housework even when they were pregnant. Unlike the lazy, useless kids you see these days, we were always urged to exercise regularly until we gave birth. I agree that some moderate exercise is good even when you're pregnant, but everybody's body is different, and no two pregnancies are the same. There may be women who could exercise until they give birth, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to impose brutal, one-size-fits-all exercise plans onto people who don't want them. People were encouraged to do all kinds of risky things in the name of health in the good old days because information was scarce and the world was full of pseudoscience and superstitions. But we don't live in your so-called good old days anymore. We live in a highly advanced age of science and medicine. I bet you knew very well that the absurd demands you were making on my daughter were dangerous. And you kept doing it because you wanted your own personal servant. Am I right? It was never my intention to force anything on her, I swear. The only reason I suggested she do more exercise was because I love her and want her to be as healthy as she can for the baby. Obviously, I don't live with you, so I don't know exactly what this fitness routine of yours looks like, actually. But I have seen your message history, and to me, this looks like nothing but you. One-sidedly making you do her will in the name of health like some crazy dictator. Besides, what kind of a decent human being in their right mind calls their pregnant daughter-in-law such horribly rude and disrespectful things like big blubbery manatee or Miss Porky? No, 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 I was joking when I said those things. Me and your vet are always having fun with each other. It was all in good humor. That's just how we are together. Something tells me that's a lie. From reading her messages, it seemed like she was being a bit careful not to say anything that might offend you. Even if, for the sake of argument, I accept you weren't forcing her. Who in their right mind asks a pregnant woman to walk six hours to the supermarket and back? We'll never forgive you for what you did. Which hospital did Brielle go to? I want to see her. I'll go right now. We rather you didn't. In fact, we'll do anything to stop you from putting her and her baby in any more danger than you already have. Which means keeping you as far away from her as possible. I'll be taking care of my daughter from now on. You will never see her again. And you can forget about meeting your grandchild. The sooner you accept that, the better. You know I owe you an apology. I'm so sorry. Please answer me. I'm begging you. I acted horribly. I'm so sorry for everything I did to you. The more I think about it, the worse I feel. Hi, Jesse. It's been a long time. You've heard. Is it really you this time? This isn't Vanessa, is it? No, it's not my mom. It's really me. I'm so glad you and the baby are okay. My son would have been even more furious than he already is if anything bad happened to either of you. I was so scared. I see. But you weren't scared for me or the baby, were you? You were scared for yourself. Your only concern was that everyone would find out about all the terrible stuff you put me through, right? Brielle, please. Not you too. Don't be so harsh. I'm sincerely, truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. Come on, honey. You know, I've always been the kind to speak my mind and say what I think, for better or for worse. I understand that some of the advice I gave you was bad, but please understand that I never did any of it with evil intentions. I only had your best interest at heart. I see. Please, will you make sure Rick and your mother understand that I don't want everyone getting the wrong idea about me? We were living together so well after all. Neither of them would listen to anything I had to say. They've made up their minds about me, and there's nothing I can say or do to change that. That's why it's not an exaggeration to say you're the only person I've got left to count on. 
Please, Brielle, make them see. This has all been one big mistake, won't you? For me. I'm so sorry, Jesse, but I can't do that. Why not? I thought me and you were getting along so well. Did you really think that, though? Did you? You seem to be forgetting that me and Rick didn't even want you to live with us in the first place. The only reason you got your way is because you used your spare key to sneak in with your things when we were out. Brielle, please! Maybe my entry was a little unconventional, I admit it, but surely if you wanted me gone that badly, you would have said so. The fact that I've been staying with you so long must mean you agreed. No, we just gave up in the face of your stubbornness. Exasperation agreements are two completely different things. Besides, you were as sweet as sugar when my husband was around. So, as reluctant as he was at first, he didn't see any urgent need to get rid of you. Things were different when it was just me and you, though, weren't they? You were awful. At the slightest sign of trouble, you yelled at me and compared me to other people who would obviously be so much better at doing whatever it was I was doing. I'd never been spoken to with such malice until I met you. If you felt that way, why didn't you just tell me? If I'd have known I was hurting you, I would have changed my ways. You're right, I should have. But I was so determined not to make things go bad between us that I just kept my mouth shut and endured your abuse until my mind and body couldn't take it anymore. I understand that was wrong of me now. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you, Brielle. If you said what you said without meaning to hurt me, you're genuinely frightening because your bullying got a million times worse as soon as Rick went away on his business trip. If you really never meant to hurt me, does that mean you were bullying me without even being aware of it? If so, you need to go and get some help because you're sick. Are you seriously claiming you didn't realize what you were doing? I was just concerned about you. Everything I did, I did out of love for you and the baby. Wow. You did. Okay, I understand now. Yes, you finally get it. I'm so happy to hear you say that, honey. Thank you. You're the nicest person I've ever met, Brielle. Thank you for understanding why I did what I did. I always knew you'd see reason if anyone had what it took to be compassionate and respectful enough to get through this like a grown-up. It was you. Wrong. You seem confused when I say I understand. I mean, I understand that letting you stay with us is no longer an option. Besides, what hope for recovery is there for someone who cruelly bullies others without any awareness of what they're doing? That's horrifying. And me and Rick aren't willing to live with someone like that. That's why you won't be living with us anymore. No, wait. Please, if you kick me out, I won't have anywhere else to go. That's not my problem. Sort out your own mess. You're an adult after all, right? I did have my husband's inheritance, but it's almost all gone now. Which means there's a little bit left. Good. Use it to rent a room and work on getting your life together from there. Obviously, you'll have your challenges, and things will likely be tough for a while. You're probably going to have to find a job and actually work for a change, too. You bet. I'm so sorry. Wait a minute. What exactly are you apologizing for? I thought you never meant to hurt me. Okay, fine. Maybe I didn't know I was being a little hard on you, but I really mean it when I say just a little. I just wanted to keep you fit so you'd be in top shape by the time the baby was born. That's all. I didn't think for one second it would lead you to collapsing on the road. Does that mean you were aware you were bullying me? Yes, I'm sorry. I'll never do anything like that again. That's all I wanted to hear. Thank you. Brielle, no, please don't do this. Like hell it does. <laughs> on the contrary, it means we have absolutely no regrets about kicking you out on the streets now. Because now we know that you knew exactly what you were doing when you made me walk all those hours to the store. And when you threw insults at me. It means that now we can cut you out of our lives without a second thought, as quickly as we throw a rotten apple in the trash. Please, I'm sorry. Surely you admit I was nice to you most of the time. I didn't do anything terrible until Rick went away on business. I can be like that again. No, even nicer. I swear I'll be the best mother-in-law ever. Please just give me one more chance. You think apologizing is going to fix what you did? What would you have me do besides this recent unfortunate incident? I was always nice to you, wasn't I? I always smiled, asked how you were, helped you around the house. Can't you see how sorry I am? Please think again. 
Please find it in your heart to forgive me and give me one more chance. I have a feeling this whole thing has taught me a little bit about what it means to be a mother. I now know that I have to be more confident to protect my baby and not do whatever other people tell me to. Just keep up the appearance of a healthy relationship. Me, Rick, and the baby are all fine without you. So please leave us alone. We don't need your bullying and we don't need your advice and we don't need you. The only thing we need you to do is to disappear into a cold, dark place where you can never hurt anyone ever again and stay there forever. Afterwards, after getting rid of my mother-in-law, I gave birth to a healthy baby girl and moved back in with my parents. Jessie tried desperately to persuade us not to kick her out, but me, my husband, Rick, and my mom never forgave her, and we never will. Eventually, she gave up and left. I heard she moved into an apartment in our area after that. I have no clue how she'll survive on her own from now on, but to be honest, I don't care. Me and my husband have no intention of helping her, no matter how bad her situation gets. Not only did she use sneaky, dirty tricks to get into our house, but she actually had the guts to start a vicious, bullying campaign against me as thanks for our kindness. Shocked isn't the word we reluctantly let her stay at the time, because she had nowhere else to go. And we felt a little sorry for her. Now we feel nothing. I'm praying with every ounce of my being. She stays the hell away from me and my daughter forever. Not long after giving birth and staying at my parents' place for a while, me and my daughter Holly moved into a new apartment Rick bought for us. Life as a new mom with my loving, caring husband and adorable daughter can be surprisingly busy and stressful at times, but it's built on a strong foundation of love and warmth. And I'm the happiest I've ever been. I feel nothing but gratitude towards Rick and my mom, who came to the rescue as soon as they heard it collapsed. Not to mention all of our wonderful friends and relatives who showered us with gifts and well wishes when Holly was born. I'm touched to tears when I think of how lucky I am to be surrounded by such amazing, kind people. And I plan on returning the favor and letting them know they're appreciated. Most importantly, I'll never put my daughter in danger like that again. At that time, I thought I could handle it, but... I understand now that I was doing so wrong for her. I've never seen myself as a strong person, but I hereby make a promise to change for the sake of my daughter. I'll never let anyone bully me like that again. My days of putting up with stuff I don't have to put up with from people who have no right to treat me that way are over. I'm moving towards the future with a smile on my face and a sworn duty to my family. In my heart, I want to be strong, confident, and reliable as my hero, who happens to be a certain special someone in my life. Yep, I'm talking about you, Mom.